Out and get the big picture now as forecasters believe Hurricane Nate will be a Category 2 before it makes landfall somewhere not far from where Rick is. Meteorologist Adam Klotz in the Fox Extreme Weather Center with the latest. Uh, big picture, Adam, uh, how much worse is this storm going to get? Uh, well, the wind speeds are going to be picking up here a little bit, Leland, in the next several hours. Here's the setup. Here's what we're looking at. Winds at 96 miles an hour. This is a Category 1 storm, but at 95, 96 miles an hour, that's when you jump up to a Category 2. So we're already very close. You'll also notice this is a very quick mover, moving north-northwest at 26 miles an hour. Oftentimes when we're talking about these storms, moving more to 8 to 15 miles an hour. This one lifting very close, uh, very quickly on its way up towards the coast. So we'll be paying very close attention to it likely making landfall late tonight into early tomorrow. And as it moves, it's running over some very warm water. Warm water, that's what fuels these. If you're at 80, mi or 80 degrees, that's enough to continue to develop this storm. That's why we're going to be looking at it jump from a Category 1 up eventually here to a Category 2 storm. I'll put this into motion for you. And as it lifts that direction, runs over that warm water I was just talking about, late tonight, likely, likely a Category 2 storm. It's going to be right on that boundary. And we are looking, again, there's your cone of uncertainty certainty, but you're looking at a stretch from New Orleans over towards Mobile, all areas that are going to be impacted very heavily from this system. That's running you now early tomorrow morning, so the system eventually lifting off the coast. It's going to be an event that takes place late tonight into early tomorrow. Here's a future radar. You can get an idea of where your circulation is. I'll put this on the move for you. Pay attention to our timestamp. By the time we get at 11 p.m. to midnight, that's when you really start to see the effects impacting the Gulf Coast. It's going to linger, though. This isn't going to just hit and run off right away. So I'm thinking from 10, 11, midnight, now running you to 3 a.m., still looking at areas along the Gulf Coast, getting some of the heaviest rain, some of these very strong winds, before eventually this lifts to the north. Folks in portions of Alabama, folks in portions of Georgia are all going to be experiencing this. But no surprise here, you're looking at a stretch of hurricane watches and warnings. Storm surge is going to be an issue, especially there on the eastern half of this, anywhere from three to six, and in some cases, maybe up to nine feet of storm surge. Uh, so we still have several hours, Leland, but this is one we're going to be watching really closely. I think it's uh, uh, wrapping up for the Gulf Coast early tomorrow morning. Real quick before you leave, storm surge yeah. is always worst on the dirty side, the eastern part right. of the storm. Any idea if it's going to track left or right? And that's so critical there right around Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans. Well, everything we're seeing now, and that's all still in the cone of uncertainty, so you can't say for sure, uh, but it's trending more to come up on the eastern side of New Orleans, which means the bigger storm surge would be stretching off maybe closer to Mobile. Uh, but again, it's within that cone, so it obviously could jog a little bit west in uh, New Orleans, and those areas could be right in the brunt of it. Yeah, where the storm surge would have a lot worse effect. All yeah. right, stay on it. Adam, thank you.